Hello guys, one of the first things I bought after I got the Massey 8680 was this Kuhn fertilizer spreader. The reason I bought this was because I thought it would have plenty of space to hide a battery. And as it turned out, I was right. And this idea worked pretty well. All I had to do was drill a little hole, run the battery connector wires through the hole, add a DuPont connector on one end, connect up my battery, get it in here in a way that it'll let the door close, and there we go, 100% perfect, perfectly hidden battery. The only problem now is that I don't use voltage regulators on my tractors anymore, so I can't use a 9 volt battery. So in my first version of the Massey, I used a voltage regulator to regulate 9 volts or pretty much any voltage over 5 volts down to the 5 volts. That worked uh, pretty good, but the only problem was that I was being limited by the current capacity of the regulators. So uh, I eventually decided that it was a better idea just to run everything straight from a 3.7 volt uh, LiPo battery, which could deliver much more power. These 9 volt batteries, they're only a couple of hundred milliamp hours, so that's 150 milliamp hours. But they also have quite a bit of internal resistance, so they can't deliver power quickly. A LiPo battery, on the other hand, can uh, almost, well, it can't instantly deliver the power, but it can deliver it pretty quickly. So, now that I have switched everything to use the 3.7 LiPo, my fertilizer spreader here, which was extremely useful to have a battery pack that you could just hook on and you could drive around. Because, don't forget, when this is on the back, you're not towing a heavy trailer, so you're not drawing a huge amount of current. So, if you have a good battery in this, you can drive your tractor for an awful long time. Um, I know you you'll only be drawn it with a fertilizer spreader, but uh, I mean you get you get a long lifetime out of the battery because you're barely drawing any current. So this needs updating. So that's what I'm going to do today. A couple of weeks ago, you seen me with this uh, five battery charger from uh, Gearbest.com, and I cut the wires off this battery. So what I'm going to do with this battery, obviously enough, use that in my fertilizer spreader. So that's all I'm going to do today, wire this up, charge it up, and show you how simple it is. So, we need to get our battery ready. We just need a little bit of wire to make our connection. Then on this side we just need to cut enough wire to make our connection as well. There's plenty of room to pull the wire back in if it's too long anyway, so I don't mind cutting that short because uh, I don't really use 9 volt batteries anymore anyway on, on anything that I do. So let's take a look, we we'll pull this wire up here so that we can work with it a little easier, we can pull it back through later. We'll There's our wires cut to roughly where we want them. Now you need your bit of heat shrink, so we'll cut a length of that. Put your heat shrink on your wires before you solder them, obviously. Okay, I skipped a step there a little bit. I just hooked it up to these, um, I think you call them helping hands things or something like that. But uh, I just meshed the two wires into each other there. Hopefully I'll be able to solder this now with the camera in the way. It's a little bit tricky. Okay, that went alright. So that's one connection. Uh, I'll just put the heat shrink on that. And that'll prevent us uh, shorten that wire out. I, I usually use the soldering iron to the end of the soldering iron, not the tip. So I'm uh, soldering from further back along the soldering iron tip, not the very end of the tip that you would normally solder with. Because if there's any dirt or anything on the heat shrink, you'll uh, get that on the tip of the soldering iron, which is not ideal. 
obviously you don't need to use a soldering iron to shrink heat shrink um, you can just use a lighter or something like that uh, it might be a little bit easier that's the positive connection made and that is our battery pack for our RC tractor finished basically uh, put the wire back through the hole here put our battery in place and there we go 100% finished here we are hooked up to our Massey 8680 650 milliamp hour battery so we should be able to go for quite a long time with this I showed you in a different video that the Massey steering was taking about 500 milliamps and that the drive motor was only taking about 100 milliamps or something like that when it was driving so considering those values there is a good chance that you'd get nearly an hour's worth of uh, driving out of this battery uh, you might get more depending on how much of the steering you're using but also as the battery discharges the voltage of the battery is going to drop so I'm not exactly sure how much of your 650 milliamp hours uh, you get before the battery voltage goes too low for the microcontroller before the microcontroller starts resetting basically but I would guess since this is your only load you would get the guts of an hour out of this uh, battery so I think that's a pretty good battery pack if you like that make sure and give it a, a thumbs up and any comments or suggestions I'm always uh, happy to hear them either in the forum preferably in the forum but also on the videos um, I have another battery pack this is a mower for the front of the um, this is a mower for the front of a tractor I used to have wires on the front of this tractor so that I could just plug a power pack straight into the front of the model because I used to use this uh, I used to use this with some uh, AAA batteries I had five AAA batteries in this and uh, obviously I can't do that anymore because we've switched to 3.7 volts but also I removed the wires off the front of this I never added them back on when I upgraded the Massey here so uh, I need to add the 3.7 volt batteries to this and uh, I'll probably need to connect wires to the Massey, I probably will do that the, the other benefit to having this on the front of the tractor is although it made the tractor longer it weighed the front down so your, your steering was a lot better although the LiPo batteries are a lot lighter than the the AAA batteries were so it might not have the same effect so obviously with this uh, with this battery pack I bought two of these 650 milliamp hour batteries so you get 1300 milliamp hours from this battery pack that would last a long time even if you were pulling a trailer a heavy trailer behind this although it might look a bit weird with a mower and a load of gravel or something behind this tractor it would look strange but um, you'd have 1300 milliamp hours from two of these batteries and the way I do it is I'd put a DuPont connector on the wire here so you could just disconnect the battery put your DuPont connector out like this same on the other side and hook your two batteries up to this little charger charge the two of them at once that would be how I'd well that's how I plan to do it uh, it might not work out that way but hopefully it will um, I think I did it in a video before there's a 555 timer in this uh, little circuit here so when the batteries are connected you just flick this switch and what that does is turns on these little LEDs at the front here so they're like little warning beacons on the front of the model uh, to power the tractor you don't need to flick the switch so you can leave them off and not use that power but the power that you'd be drawn to just flash these little LEDs would be microscopic I'll be upgrading this more in a follow up video so make sure and subscribe if you want to see that it'll probably be a similarly short video to the one you just watched because I just need to connect the two batteries up to the circuit and just test it out but uh, that's pretty much everything for this video, so thanks very much for watching.